Okay, so here I am again, and my last video was about this computer, and I said I'd be going through and making videos for the individual components and explaining how they work. So um, today I'm going to do the uh, random number generator, which is this device down here, which has been copy-pasted into the machine from over here, which is where it was originally built. Um, and I actually just built the one-bit version of this and then stacked it 15 times. And so um, this is really just 16 of these next to each other. They stack without interference. And so this is a makeshift clock. If I turn this on, every clock cycle this is going to produce a different output, a different number. And the way this works is it's a 6-bit linear shift register, which is this thing here. And the way a shift register works is uh, each time the clock pulses, the whatever value is in the first register is moved into the second register, that's moved into the third register, and so on and so forth. And so if I turn this on, you can see this register has a 1 in it, and this one has a 0 in it. Now this one has a 1, and this one has a 0. And now this one has a 1 and this one has a 0. And then to make that into a linear shift register, we draw the output from predetermined points. Um, in this case, it happens to be the 5th and 6th register. It won't always be that way, depending on how many bits there are. Then you XOR them, which means that if the inputs are the same to the XOR gate, it produces a 0. If the inputs are different, it produces a 1. Here, we have a 1 and a 0. They're different. It produces a 1. And then it uh, plants that value in the first register. Yes, this will eventually generate a pattern. 2 to the power of 6 is 64, thus this has a period of 64, meaning that every 64th number generated will be the same. However, um, this isn't a problem, simply because uh, the computer, uh, as I've currently built it, only has space for 32 lines of instruction code. So even if I drew a random number from the machine every clock cycle, they would all be different. Um, if, for example, the first instruction uh, drew a random number and the 64th instruction drew a random number, they would be the same number. Um, however, again, this isn't an issue because the period is longer than the number of clock cycles required to completely use up all the instructions. Because of the conditional branching, this could become an issue, although it's uh, highly unlikely. And if it does become a real issue, I can simply add a junk instruction in there that does nothing, um, just to avoid that, or I could just extend this by one bit, which will double the period to 128. And so that's the way the random number generator works. which. I suppose isn't really a random number generator, but for all intents and purposes it is. And all I've done here is I've just, I created one random number uh, manually, then I just let it run for so many clock cycles. And it uh, just filled up the rest of the registers with values. And uh, you could easily extend this to be as many bits as you want. Um, the important parts about building these are that um, the clock inputs are staggered so that the first one receives an input first and then the second one receives the input next and so there has to be a, a particular delay between each of these um, and the delay between these registers and the delay for the clock um, that needs to be different um, and you need to tune it depending on how many bits you have. Um, this one uh, just happened to be 4 and 2, um, simply because of the number of bits it has and the time it takes for this to travel back to the input. Um, so that is subject to change, but that's the way it works now. So like, comment, subscribe, uh, whatever, if you want to. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.